Hello, everybody. Welcome to Old Tales of Nevada, past and present. Today, we're going to be talking with most one of the most respected physicians in the United States. You wonder who it is? Stay tuned. We'll tell you and all about his story when we come back. So stay tuned. Hi there. I'm Leroy Marshall of the Marshall Mint in Virginia City, Nevada. I'm proud to announce that our seven ingot set honoring the V&T Railroad is now finished. That's right, Uroy. These beautiful 999 silver ingots celebrate the engines from the world-famous V&T Railroad and honor Nevada's sesquicentennial. These limited edition treasures can be purchased only at the Marshall Mint in Virginia City, Nevada. Or visit us at marshallmint.com to get yours today. Shoeman's Custom Cycle We're a biker's bike shop from the new set of pipes to custom renovation. Building ultimate machines is our reputation. Feel the performance. Experience the power. From chrome to leather, the selection doesn't quit. If it wasn't done to shoe man's, it ain't. Shoe man's custom cycle. We're the biker's bike shop. When it comes to cleaning your carpet and tile, make the right choice and call a choice. They use a two-step deep extraction steam cleaning system that removes dirt and those nasty mites and bacteria from your carpet and tile. A-Choice offers baby-safe cleaning products and specializes in pet odor removal. So make the fresher, cleaner, healthier choice. Call A-Choice Carpet and Tile Cleaning, locally owned and operated at 745-1863. This is Lauren. She spends her days reading celebrity gossip, watching makeover shows, and checking out the occasional Robcom. Lauren sees an average of 15 commercials an hour, and at Spectrum Reach, it's our job to make sure she never sees yours. Because you're a sporting goods store, and Lauren has never chipped a nail. So meet Brittany. Get more from your marketing. Target only the customers who matter most to your business. Get targeted and go farther at SpectrumReach.com. <laughs> Welcome to Old Tales of Nevada, past and present. I'm John O'Brien, the host of the show. And with me, as usual, is my good buddy, you, Roy Marshall. He's on the other side of the set there. You, Roy, hey, welcome. You? Good Thank to you have know. you with us again today. You betcha. And we have a special guest. Oh, I know. Uh, like I said, one of the most respected physicians in the United States, Mr. James, uh, Dr. James Forsyth. And I want to welcome we're you to the show. Definitely welcome. Yeah, yeah this is your second time on the show. But uh, yes. when we're talking about cancer, uh, you can't uh, talk too much about it, actually, because there's so many new therapies that are coming out, it seems like, every day. So we want to get that whole story and your involvement in all of that advancement as far as the treatment of uh, cancer. But we want to go to you, Roy, because you, Roy, always tells us why we do the show, and, and he also tells us what he's doing with all those rocks he's got sitting in front of him there. Yeah. So uh, you're right. It's all yours. You betcha. Well, the reason we do the show is because we like to spread the word and the knowledge about the state of Nevada and its historic uh, uh, history uh, that is at the very beginnings of the United States of America. But right. it was after the Civil War when we owed more than what we were worth to France, Germany, and England. Uh, the Comstock miners came through with enough money to bail Abraham Lincoln out, and he made Nevada the state. That's right. And after that, a lot of people don't know this, but there was no silver in the United States at all. Yeah, the only up, place was Mexico. Yeah, up yeah. until that discovery up there, so there was no change for the gold money that was already in circulation, so they had to use these little small pieces of paper, which didn't <laughs> work. That good. doesn't work well. But at any rate, uh, silver became the technological metal of that age, and it is of this age because of its tremendous usage in the computer and in the electronic field. Yes, absolutely. But today, the Comstock will come back again with platinum as the major discovery being made at Virginia City. Yeah, is that the middle of the future? That's platinum? the middle of the future. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Okay, is it plentiful? No. Uh, it may be more plentiful than what we realize, but it's hard, very hard to uh, assay. And, uh, you know, I have a 
$380,000 assay gun. <laughs> so I, I Good for you. <laughs> whatever I want to assay it for. <laughs> you get it for Christmas, did you? <laughs> so anyway, you, you're you're actively uh, mining up there and finding all kinds of good stuff. Well, we're like reopening platinum. the Citral mine. Yeah. Which was Adolf Citro's first mine in 1859. <clears throat> and then later he went on to do the, the big the tunnel. Water, the big tunnel. To carry the water, yeah. What do you have in front of you there? Oh, these are all silver specimens. Um, and basically, it kind of indicate the different types of, of ways that silver forms in wire form. Yeah. Or in big blades like this. Wow. Commonly from Mexico. Oh, occurs. that's Mexico. Uh, <coughs> no, this comes from Africa. Oh, Africa. Uh, okay. This comes from uh, Peru. Okay. Uh, but the, this part of it comes from the Comstock. Oh. Along with, um, yeah, this material here. Yeah, that's the blue clay. This is Comstock uh, load material. Is that in the blue clay? No. No. Uh, okay. This is next to the blue clay. Next to the blue clay. Okay. Yeah, you can feel it. It's, it's a little uh, heavier. Yeah. How about that, Doc? <laughs> That's a nice piece, isn't it? Keep it out of your mouth. Yeah, that's gorgeous. But you can see how that makes those little bars pretty fast. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, we look forward to you uh, bringing out those uh, Comstock silver loads yeah. and oh, we're putting them in little good. bars and yeah. selling them because that's oh. very, very special. And besides uh, you doing the mining up there, you can actually buy it up there at the, Comst uh, at the Comstock bet. at the Marshall uh, Mint. Marshall Mint, yep. First 96. Place on your right coming from Reno or last place on your left if you're coming from Carson. That's right, 96 North Sea Street. And you also have a website there that you can uh, Yeah, look and at. if you want to see different types of gold ores and yep. whatnot uh, that occur around the area uh, as well as in other areas. But I have a lot of gold ore there, too, and yeah. some large nuggets to look yeah. at. Well, what's neat is you have that museum, which is free to the public, but yep. you can see all of this ore in its yep. raw, raw <coughs> form, okay? And then you can walk across the hallway. Buy the jewelry. Buy that, that jewelry. Yeah. And in its beautiful setting. So mm -hmm. great. It's a very unusual store. Very unusual store. And then you have your Silver Land Inn and Suites yeah, down below. Yeah, have a very romantic little hotel up there. We need That's some right. romantic couples to come and <laughs> enjoy it. Yeah, we just need a lot of romantic couples yeah, romantic <laughs> all couples. at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you say you're a romantic couple, do you get a discount or what? Sure. <laughs> so anyway, what's the what's the reservation number for that? 847 4484. You got it. Yeah, you got give the hotel a call and make book a room. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. And you're going to be opening for the season here shortly? Yep. May 3rd, I understand, right? Yeah, we have a, uh, a celebration for the uh, Big Bonanza Kings yes. here coming up too. On the, on the 23rd. Weekend. It'll be after because this show after will be. This show, yeah. Yeah, and, that's for sure. But anyway, yeah. we've had a, a great time putting that together in, uh, in honor of the Silver Kings up there and our new Bonanza Kings like Lance Gilman and uh, Scott Joe so. Yeah, and you know, we're real interested in earth resources of all types. Right. And in the intrinsic nature of those uh, uh, types of, of uh, essences that could be of real benefit to mankind that are both mineral, metallic, or in other forms. Right, and we use it for medical uh, treatments and, and medical medical everything else, treatment right, too. which gives yep. us a nice segue right. to yep. our Dr. Yep. Dr. James, James Forsyth. <laughs> And uh, officially welcome to the show you again here, Doc. Yeah, we and thank you. Thank second you time on the show for us. Right. Thank yeah. you both. Second time on the show. You're an old hand here. I am. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know the way of our madness here. But we wanted to get you back on because we didn't get a chance to really explore everything we wanted to talk about last time. But just to remind people a little bit about your, your history and how you came to Nevada, why don't you uh, tell us that again? And for those who didn't see our first show with you. Well, thank you, John, and thanks for the invite here. It's always a pleasure being with you guys and hearing the old tales of Nevada. I love this, uh, love the history of Nevada. Yeah. Well, I, um, I was born in Michigan, mm -hmm. dairy farm, and uh, my dad was a stockbroker. And we, um, uh, you know, I'm not proud of being from Detroit, but I was. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of relatives still back there. Um, I found out that from my uh, maternal grandfather that he was an offspring of the Kennedys and the Brownleys. His name was Brownlee, and so he was related to that. The Kennedys, they came over that. from uh, Tipperary Island together, and they intermarried, and 
So I have some Kennedy genes somewhere in my All body, right. although I'm a good Republican. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, when I was uh, uh, about 10 or 11, we moved to L.A. and to the Hollywood area, and mm -hmm. my dad was a broker there. And uh, I grew up there, went to school, high school there, uh, got a full-ride scholarship to Berkeley. Wow. This time it was a lot easier to get into Berkeley in those days. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was only $300 a quarter, so wow. you can't beat that today. No, not at all. Uh, so I was pre-med all the way. I, actually, I was very much influenced by some of my friends, uh, especially one friend's father who was a cancer doctor and always impressed me with his uh, stature and his ways. and. Barry, and his, just the, the whole personality uh, really left an impression on me. So I started off a pre-med. I never really had any other goals in life except to practice medicine. Mm -hmm. And I got through uh, four years of medical school. Well, I got through three years, John, then I ran out of money. So uh -oh. I went to the dean's office and told him I didn't think I was going to make it with my financial picture because those days they really didn't give student loans. So he said, well, have you thought about the, the military? Mm. I, I thought about in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tried to dismiss it. Huh? So the uh, Army made me a second lieutenant. They paid for my uh, the rest of my way through and got rid of all my debt. So oh, great. That was great. That was great. I came out of medical school without a penny of debt. <clears throat> and at, luckily got to my internship right uh, next door uh, at the Presidio in San Francisco, where oh. Letterman Army Hospital. Nice. Beautiful hospital. Yeah. Actually ended up taking care of General MacArthur. I was... Uh, on this, on the team that took care of him when he was here, I wasn't the main doctor by any means, but uh, Douglas MacArthur, you know, and then he, I saw he was wearing a copper bracelet one day, and I asked him personally, "What what is that for?" I had no idea. Yeah, <clears throat> he said, "Well, it's for my arthritis. It really works. You ought to try it." He <laughs> said, <laughs> How about that? <laughs> he said, "Like, why don't you get more education?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are you my doctor? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My first introduction to alternative medicine, probably. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> took a rotating internship, and then uh, the Vietnam War was breaking out at the time, and I really uh, wasn't too anxious to go over there. I never, didn't even know on the map where to find Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And uh, it started heating up. I what am I going to do? I, I'll go into pathology because that's a good background for any other specialty, and spend a couple years there. It'll help me out in the future. Little did I know, it's really very helpful in cancer medicine. Mm -hmm. And um, so I went to Triple Army Hospital in Honolulu, not really a hardship uh, assignment. No, it sounds pretty good. It was very <laughs> nice, very nice. And um, with my family at the time, and uh, I spent a couple of years there getting uh, certified in pathology. Then I got orders to Fort Bragg, in North Carolina, with the 82nd Airborne I'm a Paratrooper Unit. And... Uh, was wow, you know where you were going if you're going there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah they, you have to be qualified to jump. And I did have to jump. Oh, wow. <laughs> so uh, only a couple times. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's good. <laughs> but anyway, uh, after that, they did get orders for Vietnam in 69, and I had to come in during Tet. And our plane, a 707, was fired on mm. because it was just the start of the second big Tet, if you mm. know what the Tet was. Right, I knew Vietnamese that. New Year. Mm -hmm. And they had a horrible one the year before, so I knew this was going to be bad. But they were firing at our planes, so the pilot had to divert and sir, uh, go elsewhere for an hour and a half, I think it was. And finally, they got rid of the nests of Viet Cong that were firing at us. And <clears throat> then... Uh, we landed, I kissed the ground. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's for sure. You see a life pass in front of you there? <laughs> you probably I said, did, I didn't huh? Get a chance to see oh, the culture. My <laughs> you know, we have to take a break yeah. here in a, in a few moments, and that, that's quite a history in itself. Yeah, it is. Good thing you survived because uh, think of all that education, it would have gone to waste. <laughs> But uh, you were able to uh, survive Vietnam and, and, and leave from there into and, and bigger and greater things. So we're going to hear all about it. We're going to come back after a couple of commercial breaks here and uh, find out what else uh, the doc is up to, especially with cancer research on old tales in Nevada past and present. This is Lauren. She spends her days reading celebrity gossip, watching makeover shows, and checking out the occasional rom-com. 
Lauren sees an average of 15 commercials an hour, and at Spectrum Reach, it's our job to make sure she never sees yours. Because you're a sporting goods store, and Lauren has never chipped a nail. So meet Brittany. Get more from your marketing. Target only the customers who matter most to your business. Get targeted and go farther at SpectrumReach.com. When it comes to cleaning your carpet and tile, make the right choice and call a choice. They use a two-step deep extraction steam cleaning system that removes dirt and those nasty mites and bacteria from your carpet and tile. A Choice offers baby safe cleaning products and specializes in pet odor removal. So make the fresher, cleaner, healthier choice. Call A Choice Carpet and Tile Cleaning, locally owned and operated at 745 1863. Hello, and welcome to Boutique Elegante. Today we're showing our fabulous collection of sweaters for fall, teaming them with fabulous denims in all colors. For a day in the city, wonderful nubby jackets, a perfect black and white tweed suit, and day into evening in a three-piece black opera suit. For an evening out, dinner or the opera, more exquisite fashions for that very special occasion. All of this and so much more at Boutique Elegante. Somewhere in Time is the place to find the unexpected gift that will be treasured for all time with one of the largest beer and sun purple glassware collections on the West Coast. Vintage Toys, Roseville, Flow Blue, Casino and Brothel Memorabilia, Fenton Glassware, Antique Kerosene Lamps, Sports Memorabilia, Vintage Neon, and Automobile Ads. Yes, the unexpected. Find a gift that will be treasured for all time at Somewhere in Time in Reno. Deluxe Travel, locally owned and operating since 1991, is a home for travel to Mexico and Central and South America. The crew at Deluxe Travel is bilingual, trustworthy, thorough, and caring. They will do everything possible to make your dream vacation the best it can be. Now is the time to book for winter travel, so stop by the office at 100 California Avenue or call 686-7000. You can also check us out on our website at DeluxeTravelLTD.com. At Deluxe Travel, we sell dreams. A minute, plan yours. We're back here in Old Tales in Nevada, past and present. We're talking with one of the most respected physicians in the United States, right here in Reno, Nevada, where he has his clinic. What's the name of the clinic, Doc? Well, it's Century Wellness Clinic, soon to be called the Forsyth Cancer Care Center. We're All right. planning on franchising. Oh, that. okay. That, I think that's a better name anyway. That's great. Yeah, that's a good name. Because, I mean, it, 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 you're, you're so well known. That well, you, when I go, it has to carry on, and in order to carry on, it has to have my name. I yeah, think, so there sure. you go. Right, right. So anyway, you, you took us through your... Your time in Vietnam, you, you got out of there alive, you come back to the United States, and, and what did you do when you got back? Well, before I left, I had an unfortunate incident where I, we went uh, in a Chinook, a double-bladed chopper, to one of the offshore islands to take care of the refugees, the women and children were, that were there. And on the way back, a rotor blade went out. Mm-hmm. The pilot had to circle back to said, take off your shoes, we're going to... Probably have a water landing oh. uh, if I and set it down by, on the coral reef. And uh, he got about 100 yards offshore and went down in water. And we oh, were, had our shoes wrapped around our neck. And none of us were carrying weapons. And there, it was, there was some rumor that the Viet Cong were actually on the island, but they hid during the day. <clears throat> they came in at night. So I didn't know if I was going to wake up uh, at all the next morning or have yeah. my head chopped off or whatever. But anyway, I... I Covered myself with reeds and uh, sand, and, and did to survive. And they couldn't get a chopper out at night to to save us. It was too dark, and wow. too dangerous, scary. <clears throat> so, I, so that yeah, was my I, one clo- close call there. Yeah. Uh, when I got back, I decided uh, just that I really was not uh, cut out to be a pathologist. I'd rather do people work and, and be an internist. And so I did an, in, uh, a. Uh, medical residency in San Francisco at Children's Hospital and at General Hospital. And okay. then during that time, uh, one of the top hematologists in the in the town, that uh, Dr. Ralph Wallerstein, got me interested in hematology, which at that time was doing all the cancer work done. There was really no oncology per se as a specialty until I entered my fellowship. And really? What year was that now? That would have been 70 and 71. Okay. Yeah, okay. right after I got back from Nam. And so I, uh, after my internal medicine 
degree. Then I went right into my old alma mater, UC San Francisco, mm -hmm. and did a two-year fellowship mm. in medical oncology, which it's still called today. And um, that, uh, that brought me into the whole area of cancer medicine. And I was a conventional oncologist for many years, mm -hmm. really until the early 90s. From that time, I first practiced in San Francisco. I saw the first cases of AIDS. We mm -hmm. couldn't figure out what the heck was going on with My these goodness. people. We didn't have the testing for the immune system at that time. Mm -hmm. So we were really in the dark. Uh, we were exposing ourselves to the AIDS <laughs> yeah. because we didn't wow. know yeah, what did. it was. And the, uh, the hospital I worked at in San Francisco was just a couple blocks away from Polk Street was was called Gay Gulch. Wow! At the time, where most of the gays. Oh, so I was seeing lots of cancers, lots of opportunistic infections, not having any way of testing for it, not knowing how to treat it, and yeah. it was very frustrating. I can imagine. So it, it, it hadn't been identified yet with the the virus had not been identified until the early eighties. Mm -hmm. You recall? Yeah, I recall that. Yeah. Uh -huh. So this was the mid seventies. Wow. And uh, anyway, after a couple of years in San Francisco and going to six or eight hospitals, doing the bridges and living in Marin, I said, "This I'm going to be dead by the time I'm 50. I said, I, I want a small town. So I looked around in, in Reno. I, I really loved Tahoe. I loved skiing at the time. And, you know, what? You know, we have everything here. So Sure. God, that's why we all live here. Yeah, it's exactly. Beautiful, beautiful seasons. So anyway, I moved up here. I was the only oncologist in northern Nevada. There were only two in Las Vegas at the time. Yeah, and, and that, that when you told me that, I was pretty amazed because what year was that then when you got 74. here? 74. 74. So they've been doing all this atomic testing yes. down in the su southern part of, of uh, Nevada. And there was a lot of concern about people people getting cancer in those days. In fact, were pe people were getting cancer to higher degrees down there, weren't they? Yeah, it didn't come on right away. Remember, it, oh, their incubation period was yeah. 10, 15, 20 years. Oh. And they were getting thyroid cancers, yeah. John, leukemias, some increased breast cancers. Yeah. And they, the uh, above-the-ground testing went uh, down, uh, as, or I should say, went north as far as Fallon. Yeah. And uh, their water table is very high there. Mm -hmm. And the water was contaminated. And uh, people used to go out and sit on the hills. It was like a, a Fourth of July fireworks <laughs> to see the atomic clouds coming over and dropping yeah. radioactive uh, to sit on them. Right on top of them. And uh, these people, I was starting to see them uh, in large numbers because I had a satellite clinic in mm -hmm. Fallon at the time. And I was also noticing <clears throat> at that time that there were large numbers of cancer patients from a very small town. Something had to be wrong. Right. So I notified uh, my alma mater, UC Berkeley, uh, the public health department. I had some connections there. I said, I want you to come out here and study this epidemiologically mm -hmm. and find out if there is something wrong with the water supply or some environmental hazard that we're not aware of. Right. And they came out and said, well, the arsenic levels there are three or four times what they should be normal. And... Uh, so they did, uh, it was in the papers and everything, and of course I wasn't well liked and fell in after that, because <laughs> the Chamber of Commerce wasn't Oh, I can imagine so, but uh, what, I mean, you couldn't hide it, it had to come can't out. hide it, but they did say there was a problem there, but nothing really happened until the leukemic epidemic in the late 90s, mm -hmm. from 95 to 2000, uh, 16 cases of childhood leukemia occurred, which there should have only been one or two for that size. Right, population. I remember that whole story. Yeah. yeah, and so they did. <clears throat> now they rolled out all their big guns, and even had Hillary was out here at the time, and EPA came out, and they finally decided it was arsenic plus tungsten. Uh, there were some plants releasing tungsten into the water supply out there. Wow! <clears throat> and once they cleaned that up, John, it. The leukemia epidemic was gone. Yeah, it seemed to disappear. So it was right. the water yeah, yeah. But but uh, what about the atomic testing? That you said there was one test up there in Fallon, above ground test. Yeah, in the late fifties. Late fifties, yeah. and so that had to have residual effects for that, many years. That was a fact. Let me let me give you guys a little bit of extra information that you may yes. not know. Yeah. Yes. The, uh, in the in during the seventies, an effort began at Mercury. Uh, blasting uh, with uh, atomic uh, underground mm -hmm. detonations, which took the uh, the effort down to about eight thousand feet. 
mm -hmm. uh, with uh, basically the whole wall rock around this area where the detonations were, were taking place, filled with walls of crystals which mm. had never been seen before. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. And, uh, th this is basically top secret information. Yeah, well, yeah. So, it's still uh, there, huh? They, no, well, <laughs> I tell you, you, you know, you could have gotten information on this in almost any college library up until the 80s. Okay. And then after that, just you never see. You never seen it again. That is, that is the end of it. Yeah. Wow. So was it the atomic testing changed the structure of the rock down there? It had to have, right? Well, that's how they learned about the atomics. What happens when, when it, the detonation occurs? That's why they detonated out there to start with. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. See what the effect would be. Sure. Sure. So after that, they knew they could never do that again. And then the Russians started doing it underground. The Chinese have been doing it underground. Yeah. Yeah. Iran is doing it underground. Yeah. yeah, better underground than above ground. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> because better. all that above ground stuff, both in the south and up here in the north, that thing about Fallon just uh, amazes me because uh, you never heard about that, you know? It was it was something that was done, Very and it had to have affected people for many years. And so besides the arsenic and the tungsten causing problems, did the uh, atomic testing and the radiation that was residual there, did that cause people to have thyroid cancer, lung cancer, and things like that as well? Well, we think it did. It did. We think, we think it did. It was very hard to check. Yeah. Because For example, now, is there, is there a greater uh, number of cancer patients in the Fallon area than perhaps in the Reno area? They were never tested for that. They were never tested, huh? No, they were never yeah. tested for yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So wait, let me ask you this, uh, doctor. When did, when did cancer become known as cancer? Because back in the mining days on the Comstock, a person might get cancer, but they didn't say cancer. So who was the first one to really... You know, it was really a closet term. No one wanted to even talk about it. I remember in the 40s, I'm older than you, most of you guys here, but they'd never, if a neighbor had cancer, you'd never mention it. Yeah. It was a closet term. It was considered taboo to mm. even mention it because you weren't really certain whether it was contagious or not or right. whether the kids were going to have it. And so it wasn't even mentioned. It was a very silent thing, and, and uh, that was just a universal thing. Uh, I'm talking about in Michigan and California where I, I grew up for the most part. And so that's the way it stayed until finally in the, uh, really in the mid to late 60s is mm. when it started. They started identified that, as cancer. As cancer. And, and tried to find cures for the cancer. Exactly. The, yeah. it, got, it got actually public, uh, you know, uh, widespread um, interest when uh, Madame Curie, who uh, you know, discovered radium, Oh, yeah, well. and then of course they put it in everybody's wristwatches. You know? <laughs> oh yeah, got, and <laughs> yeah. they all got wrist cancer. No. <laughs> she, she, she died of cancer. So, yeah, so that they, was, they seen that. Uh, yeah, that was around 1910 to 1920. Yeah, those, those yeah, years. and so. It, traditionally, the way they used to treat cancer was surgery, right? Back in the early days, if they saw a tumor, they would they would surgery just... Surgery and, and curies a little bit of radiation. There weren't any chemo drugs until the late 40s. Okay. They had discovered uh, nitrogen mustard had caused the bone marrows to go away mm -hmm. in patients and soldiers that were exposed to nitrogen mustard gas. Oh, John, so when they did those autopsies, they'd look at the marrow under the microscope, there'd be no cells there, they, and they thought, hey, this might be good to treat leukemias with, because oh. it's a marrow disease. Yeah. And so that's one of the first ones, and then uh, methotrexate, one of the uh, antimetabolite uh, drugs came on the scene also about that time. Mm -hmm. But up until the late 40s, there was nothing. Nothing. There were steroids, and that was about it. Yeah, yeah. No treatments for leukemia. If you had leukemia, just like in the Love Story movie, yeah. you were dead. You were dead. That's that's. Uh, death if you had death. pancreatic cancer, it was like a month or two. Yeah, and that's still kind of the yeah. case in, in yeah. many ways. Yeah. Well, listen, we got to take another break. We're going to get into the more modern day treatments of cancer therapy and where Doctor Forsyth has really come into his own uh, with his. Uh, innovative ways of doing it. So we'll be back with more Old Tales in Nevada right after this. Yikes! Look what's in your carpet and tile. Dirty, nasty dust mites, bacteria, germs, and pet odor. 
Make the right choice and call A Choice Carpet and Tile Cleaning today. They use a two step system that removes all that nasty stuff from your carpet and tile, and they offer baby safe cleaning products. Call A Choice today. The first 25 customers to call will get three rooms cleaned for the price of two. Call today, 745 1863. Deluxe Travel, locally owned and operating since 1991, is the home for travel to Mexico and Central and South America. The crew at Deluxe Travel is bilingual, trustworthy, thorough, and caring. They will do everything possible to make your dream vacation the best it can be. Now is the time to book for winter travel, so stop by the office at 100 California Avenue or call 686 7000. You can also check us out on our website at deluxetravelltd.com. At Deluxe Travel, we sell dreams. Come in and plan yours. Welcome back to Old Tales Nevada, past and present. And let me introduce everybody one more time. I'm John O'Brien, the host of the show. Uh, you, Roy Marshall, with us and our special guest, one of the most respected physicians in the United States with actually a world-breaking uh, therapy. We're going to talk yeah. about that as we move along here because it's so important. We want to make sure we get there. But uh, Dr. F James Forsyth, who has his clinic right here in Reno, Nevada, and just like many of our individuals uh, we have on our show, uh, they have gotten involved in some really cutting edge things, whether it be medical or whether it be industry or mining, whatever it happens to be, ever since the early days of Nevada, right, you Roy? That's right. And so Dr. Forsyth he's is a pioneer right in the here. medical field. He's, he's making history right now. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So we were talking about different therapies and how primitive it was, uh, it, not even recognizing the fact that it was cancer, and then finding out that uh, we do have cancers we have to treat, and they had these uh, chemotherapies, and then what, what advanced from there, uh, Dr. Forsyth, well, if John, you could tell us. Uh, going through medical school and internship and residency, uh, we had only at that time a dozen or so chemotherapy agents, now uh, there are hun literally hundreds. hundreds. Mm. Nothing was ever known about the effect of alternative therapy. Laetrile was out there. Laetrile, I remember that. Laetrile yeah. from Peach Pits. Yeah, right, pits. right, it's right. still out there. Everybody went to Mexico for Vitamin it. Vitamin B17, it works. Yeah. It actually works, but the FDA, no way. Mm -hmm. It throws up a red flag right away. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, when I entered it, it, it was really a nascent field. It was mm -hmm. the first time boards were given in medical oncology in the early 70s and when I took my boards. And all of the guys I trained with became heads of department in various universities, even Sloan Kettering, MD Anderson, mm -hmm. University of Arizona, UCSA, UCLA. And they were all top-notch because they had all that trade. No one else knew what to treat kids with. Yeah. And then these protocols that came up, a lot of them were drawn up haphazardly. Well, well th we think we'll give three or four or five drugs here this week and then two drugs then. They didn't know what they were doing, John. <laughs> and uh, they still don't because oncology actually is a big guessing game until mm -hmm. just recently with yeah. the Human Genome Project. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that shortly. Yeah. But as an oncologist, you always meant well, and I'm not trying to put them down because I was on that side of the fence. Mm -hmm. You'd always guess, based on the last lecture you went to, the last journal you read, what drugs now are going to work for your prostate cancer mm -hmm. now, or your your lymphoma, or whatever you had. Oh, God forbid you have any of those. But I did have the prostate cancer. Oh, right. Sorry, I got too close to home. Yeah, we're hitting below the belt there, Doc. <laughs> Literally, no pun intended. Uh, so anyway... Uh, with the advent now of the Human Genome Project, which was completed in 2003. What, for the layman, what is, what is that? That basically told everyone what your 23 pairs of genes are up to, what all the genetic markers, all the chromosomes, and the, uh, they're all labeled now. They all know what they do. Mm -hmm. They're still learning a lot about right. it, not to say they're not learning anymore. But they now know how they relate to various cancers. Mm. Mm. So, when I was in the in the mid '90s, I decided I had to do something other than straight medical oncology because it limits you. You couldn't even give vitamins out of your office. You couldn't get IV vitamin C. You couldn't no get peroxide. You couldn't do ozone. 
you couldn't do anything that was natural. Mm. Otherwise, the board would be knocking on your door saying, Malpractice or something? Yeah, or? you're not. This is not the standard of medicine. Uh -huh. So I said I have to become a homeopath. And mm -hmm. fortunately, Nevada is one of the few states mm -hmm. that licensed homeopathy. Okay. Um, Oklahoma was another one. Arizona was one, and Connecticut. Is that a long course of study as well? Like it's a, a two-year study course. Uh -huh. I did it at the British Institute of Homeopathy. Okay. And uh, by becoming a dual boarded, I could push the envelope and combine East and Western medicine. And I right. think that's the key. Mm -hmm. And everything is pointing and headed that way, Jack, mm -hmm. where you're doing uh, the best of natural things plus the best of the chemicals, but not necessarily using full dose chemo anymore. Right. And we've developed a way to give insulin with the chemo where we only have to use a ten or fifteen percent dose. Oh, really? Now yes. that that is because in two, in uh, nineteen thirty two, Otto Warburg, a famous mm -hmm. scientist, won a Nobel Prize for discovering that cancers only thrive on simple sugars and high glycemic foods. Mm -hmm. They cannot handle complex proteins or fats. It kills them. It, 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 they, they just don't know how to metabolize. Yeah, okay. They're, they're stupid cells. Yeah, stupid cells. And they don't, know, they, don't, <laughs> they don't know how to die either. So yeah. instead of, you know, they multiply and they sit there, they don't know how to die, they over flood the body with cancer cells. So when the cancer cells go up to 10 to the 13th, 10 to the 14th log, you've got 200 pounds of tumor in your system. Oh, well, no one can live with 200 pounds of cancer no, in your system. No, not at all. So that's death right there. Yeah. That's yeah. the death cell. Yeah. So the point is you have to lower the cancer burden mm -hmm. and you have to stimulate the immune system. Those are the two most important things. And that's what we've incorporated into our new Forsyth Immune Protocol. Mm -hmm. And it goes like this. If you were referred to me, and I apologize for having to use your, your case, but with advanced prostate cancer, mm -hmm. we would go over all the records, do everything that ever, a normal oncologists do, but then we would ask, ask you, John, we want to take your blood and send it in for what's called circulating tumor cells, CTCs. CTCs. Because all of us, all the time, mm -hmm. even the normal ones in this room and everywhere else, have circulating cancer cells every day of our life. Yeah, and then, but, but the immune system. Small numbers, but our yeah. immune system, the surveillance, the the policemen of our system right. are out there snuffing them out right. as fast as they come. It's only when our immune system is low, like in an AIDS patient or a a graft patient, like mm -hmm. a recipient of a kidney graft or mm -hmm. liver graft, their immune system is, is lowered so that they can handle the graft. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. prone to cancers. Ah, okay. Patients who have hepatitis C or B uh -huh. are prone to cancers. Okay, okay. So we take your cells and we send it off to one of the three top genetic labs in the country, mm -hmm. in, the, in the world, I should say, not in the country, because one in Korea, mm -hmm. one in Germany, and one in Greece. And Thank we've you. used all three, John. We found that the one in Greece, called the Research Genetic Cancer Center, mm -hmm. in Florina, Greece, yeah. takes, uh, and our, the cells we take from you are good for 96 hours. Mm -hmm. Even if your cells arrive at midnight mm -hmm. in Greece, they start working they on start it. They start working on it, well. So then they grow the cancer out of, of the body in Petri dishes, and they get enough cells to work with. Mm-hmm. So they're able, through very high-tech means, and I'm a pathologist, this mm. is way above my pay scale, John. <laughs> so they, they, first of all, they grow them, then they tear them apart genetically, mm. and they can tell from your genes, and whether they're overexpressed, underexpressed, mm. mutated, whatever, and all the genes are re labeled, re remember that. Mm -hmm. And then they test them against various drugs and various supplements. Wow. So within a week to 10, 12 days, you get a blueprint back that I can hand you and say, John, this is your blueprint for your successful remission. Isn't that something? Yeah. Which they've yeah. never had yeah. before. Yeah. It, now, they have a name for each each one? I, like all my, the genes are numbered, a name. They're both yeah. numerical names and alphabetical. Yeah. But the actual uh, therapy that you offer them, uh, is there an umbrella name for that? Like my sister has stage four melanoma. She's yeah. taking some. It's the Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter. Cocktail. Yes. And it, there's a name for that. Yes. They actually have a name for oh, it. Yes. 
So when they when they make one for you and they make one for me, is it under a general umbrella name that persons could ask about if they were going to yes. inquire? What would that What would that be? Well, there. Well, first of all, would be your therapy. They would will it? isolate for your. We're talking about your prostate yeah. cancer now, just so the audience knows what yeah. we're referring to. So there would there would come up on the test probably. 10 to 20 agents that would work good for you. By good, I mean they have to be over 55% effective. Mm -hmm. But the ones we use, John, are only going to be over 80%, and we never find anything higher than 85 because there's no perfect drug out there yet. Mm -hmm. so I say yet because I think there will be. Uh -huh. What's it made out of? I mean, what what what's the... <laughs> Well, what is it? These they, are chemicals. They're, just chemicals? They're anti-metabolites. They're alkylating agents, things that you don't know. Yeah, I have no they're, idea. <laughs> they're spindle cells. Remember, when a cancer cell divides, John, it pulls apart and forms a spindle. Mm. They're spindle cell inactivators, mm. things that poison this. That's, ah, okay. So the mother cancer can't make daughter kids. Ah, okay. So there's all kinds of clever things, and there's yeah. part of the... Part of the uh, molecules in a DNA or RNA molecule are what's called anti-metabolites. They actually either force or substitute for the chemicals in the RNA molecule okay. or the DNA. So cell. what you're doing with that uh, test and everything else, this this is unique. This is the the world-breaking therapy that that we're we're talking about here. Nobody That's, else is doing this. That is the first part of it. John, the first part is doing the genomic testing, mm -hmm. and it has many names. You'll see in the literature, it's called DNA testing, it's called gene testing, okay. genomic testing, chemosensitivity testing, <laughs> precision medicine. <laughs> yeah, all right. Personalized. I could go on. It's yeah. about 12 names. Okay. You don't want to hear them all. Uh, but it's so important because it's only been 12 years, mm -hmm. or 13 years now, because 03 was when it was all established. Yeah. We could use it now. Mm-hmm. So once we get that information, then we draw up a protocol as the integrative oncologist. We call ourselves integrative because we're using the best of both worlds right. now. And that is a established specialty now. Yeah, I hear, I hear that. Okay. Yeah. Then we do what's called insulin potentiate therapy, IPT. Mm -hmm. What that means is we give a small dose of chemo, 10 mm -hmm. or 15% of the usual dose. Mm -hmm. So our patients... Don't have hair loss. Yeah. They don't have chemo brain. Wow, that's They great. don't have drug. They don't go out of the office with a bag over their face. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, how, how much better is that oh. for the pain? Wouldn't it be that's wonderful great. if yeah. we could even use it in kids who suffer grow, stunted growth and heart problems? Sure. They won't let us use it in kids yet. Wow. We can only use it in adults with cancer. Yeah, it's still experimental yeah. testing. So, so, that's my goal is really to try and get it into the pediatric. Okay, got to take a break, Doc. Oh. We're getting so, <laughs> so into Sorry. this amazing goes by fast. I get too excited. All right, we're going to finish our conversation with Dr. Forsyth on this uh, world-breaking therapy after we come back from this break on All Tales of Nevada, past and present. Hi there, I'm Leroy Marshall of the Marshall Mint in Virginia City, Nevada. I'm proud to announce that our seven ingot set honoring the V&T Railroad is now finished. That's right, Uroy. These beautiful 999 silver ingots celebrate the engines from the world famous VT Railroad and honor Nevada's sesquicentennial. These limited edition treasures can be purchased only at the Marshall Mint in Virginia City, Nevada. Or visit us at marshallmint.com to get yours today. This is Lauren. She spends her days reading celebrity gossip, watching makeover shows, and checking out the occasional rom com. Lauren sees an average of 15 commercials an hour, and at Spectrum Reach, it's our job to make sure she never sees yours. Because you're a sporting goods store, and Lauren has never chipped a nail. So meet Brittany. Get more from your marketing. Target only the customers who matter most to your business. Get targeted and go farther at SpectrumReach.com. Somewhere in Time is the place to find the unexpected gift that will be treasured for all time with one of the largest beer and sun purple glassware collections on the West Coast. Vintage Toys, Roseville, Flow Blue, Casino and Brothel Memorabilia, Fenton Glassware, Antique Kerosene Lamps, Sports Memorabilia, Vintage Neon, and Automobile Ads. Yes, the unexpected. Find a gift that will be treasured for all time at Somewhere in Time in Reno. 
Sports Travel, locally owned and operating since 1991, is the home for travel to Mexico and Central and South America. The crew at Deluxe Travel is bilingual, trustworthy, thorough, and caring. They will do everything possible to make your dream vacation the best it can be. Now is the time to book for winter travel, so stop by the office at 100 California Avenue or call 686-7000. You can also check us out on our website at DeluxeTravelLTD.com. At Deluxe Travel, we sell dreams. Come in and plan yours. Yikes! Look what's in your carpet and tile. Dirty, nasty dust mites, bacteria, germs, and pet odor. Make the right choice and call A Choice Carpet and Tile Cleaning today. They use a two step system that removes all that nasty stuff from your carpet and tile, and they offer baby safe cleaning products. Call A Choice today. The first 25 customers to call will get three rooms cleaned for the price of two. Call today, 745 1863. We're back here for our last segment of Old Tales in Nevada, past and present. What an interesting show it is, talking about the history of a disease that affects almost every single family in the world, I would say. We all have relatives, or we've had it personally, and we've all faced different kinds of therapy regarding cancer. And it is, and it has been a guessing game as to what the therapy is. But as we've been learning, not only from Dr. Forsyth, but from just the news reports and from personal experiences that this immune therapy or this integrated therapy that they're using now seems to be uh, the way towards the future. And we've been talking about this world-breaking therapy that you developed, and I want you to set it out for us, Doc, in a way that we can understand. Why is it, why is it world-breaking uh, news uh, that the way you do things is different from everybody else? Well, John, thank you. And that's the all-important point. I think you've hit on it very succinctly. And that is that uh, in their own literature, conventional medical oncology literature called the Clinical Journal of Oncology, in 2004, they did a large retrospective study, which means they took records from hospitals of people who were treated with various drugs Mm -hmm. and then measured their outcome at five years, Mm. which is kind of the gold standard. And they found out that in the United States, only 2.1% of patients were alive after five years of chemotherapy for stage 4 disease. Wow. Australia did a very similar study, almost identical, but got 2.3%. So very similar statistics. Mm -hmm. You can't really argue with those figures. And that was thousands of patients. Yeah. So in my own mind, when I saw that article, I said, this is terrible. We can definitely do better well, why aren't we? And we're not using the best of both worlds, basically. Right. Right. So by using the Human Genome Project and incorporating that in finding a blueprint and then giving them chemotherapy that really works without all the disaster side effects, mm-hmm. including death. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Add, yeah, that's um, the worst. We are now, uh, our study is now at 1,000 patients at 70 months, mm. two months away from being six years. And we have uh, a survival rate that's not 2%, but 71%, 35 Amazing. times Fantastic. greater. Amazing. Fantastic. 35 times greater. Job. And our patients do well. They're happier. They don't. Their quality of life is immmeasurably better. Does that mean it's in remission because of... Is it's that's it's in some form of remission. remission. Not growing, in other words. If a cancer is in a complete remission, that's the best remission. Mm-hmm. That is defined as no measurable disease is present by any means of testing. Right. A partial remission means there's greater than 50% reduction in the tumor mass by any means of testing. Okay. Stable disease means there's less than 50% but there's no progression, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that's still okay yeah. because it's headed in the right direction. It's just right. slow moving. Yeah. Anytime you have progression of a cancer, it's a death sentence. Mm-hmm. It means nothing is working, and the patient will die. We mm-hmm. don't know if they're going to die in three months, six months, or a year. Right. Uh, but they will die. Some are slow. Mm-hmm. Some are very rapid. Right. 
Right, like prostate cancer, so on. Think, uh, yeah, uh, prostate uh, and breast can go even yeah. a year. Thyroid can go slow. Thyroid you can have for can many go very years. Very slow. Right? Yeah, the very slowest slow. of all. But years. they also have the other side too. There is the aggressive of all of those. The, the worst, <laughs> one of the worst of all, is adrenal cortical cancer. Most people haven't heard of that, but pancreatic cancer or bile duct cancer very fast. Very fast. Okay, so people come to you. They have say prostate cancer, or thyroid cancer, or even melanoma. Okay. So you you bring them in, you do that uh, geno testing, and yes. you you come up with the uh, concoction, uh, for lack of a better word, foresight immune protocol. Yeah, so, okay, there you go, uh, which is this world breaking uh, therapy. And how long does one have to be involved in that therapy? Is it a uh, well? It's not as long as conventional. Conventional therapy usually goes four to six months minimum. minimum. Uh -huh. Right. Our therapy goes for three weeks. Hmm. Of three weeks. Intensive therapy, that means five days a week of IVs. Right. And Monday through Friday, we do three days of immune therapy, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, John, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. two days of IPT or two days of the low dose chemo, okay. Tuesday and Thursday. So we're sandwiching in the low dose chemo with the immune. So mm -hmm. while I'm beating down your cancer, I'm stimulating your immune system three days Working together, with yeah. a sandwich approach. After they go home, we put them on one of the best oral drugs that comes up on the gene testing, mm -hmm. too, because mm -hmm. there will be drugs that work for you orally as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that goes on for another three months. Then you're done. Mm. So it's yeah. a total like a four-month program. Right. Then do you do a PET scan at a certain uh, place, or do you do those kind of things, or is that not good Let to do? Let me talk about that. Because <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people do that, you know. <laughs> PET scans, bone scans, and CAT scans are... Uh, kind of uh, forbidden in our clinic because they deliver too much radiation to your immune cells. Oh. 600 times the radiation dose of a plain chest x-ray, John. You mm. don't want a lot of those. No. Because what it's doing is killing off your immune cells. Your Ooh. B cells, T cells, natural killer cells, macrophages, white cells. So all, th Ooh. all the things you need to Say fight the cancer are going away. Vista, baby. We don't need that. You can do an MRI, which is magnetic forces. Okay. No radiation. And you can see the same Ultrasound. Thing? Mm -hmm. Sound waves only. Okay. Uh -huh. And a plain chest X-ray. Those okay. are those are very. And that gives spinal. you the same information. It's the same. Plus, yeah. you have tumor markers, penny okay. marks like a, a, your prostate cancer yeah. has a PSA to follow. Right. Right. And, and when I that do that PSA every PSA is way real low. Mm -hmm. You're pretty satisfied. Yeah, I'm under one now. Oh, yeah, perfect. It was twelve, and Beautiful. then now it's now below one. You're, you're in an excellent remission. Yeah. Yeah. Let's hope it's it stays that, that way. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know what my cure is. I drink a little red wine. <laughs> right, yeah. it, it works really well for me so far. <laughs> but but so if people want to know uh, about this and cost, because it's got to be cost involved here, are you covered by insurance for this? Insurance kind of therapy? covers almost no alternative therapy. Really, no matter where Even I with give this it new? or any homeopath or naturopath, yeah. very little is covered by yeah. standard insurance. Yeah, my my sister. Uh, who has the stage four melanoma, is using this Jimmy Carter mm -hmm. therapy, very expensive. But they're probably giving it free, aren't they? I, I don't know. They, no, they're paying something it's, for it. Yeah, it's a it, test. Yeah, during but testing. In, uh, in, in clinical in controls, they actually like pay. Yeah, they're they trials. Pay for yeah, the yeah. Trials. But anyway, they have resources to pay for it. Yeah. But a lot of people don't, you yeah. know. A lot of people don't. So how do you handle people who are... want to come to you but don't have the resources? That's a good question. We do have a Forsyth... Uh, Wellness Clinic Foundation that oh. will supply some money. Mm -hmm. We try and keep expenses down mm -hmm. greatly during it. There are ways to get money through the Internet, like Pay Forward and, and various Internet sites that will give money for anyone who asks for it who has some serious disease and needs yeah. Is it very expensive to do the therapy? I mean, we talking... I, I don't like to talk about prices because yeah. a lot of the price structure is built into the drugs that are used. But the very new drugs, John, like Avastin and Herbitux, very expensive, Very. up to eight thousand dollars for a single IV. Wow, eight thousand dollars. That's amazing to me. Now, even if <laughs> even if the insurance is covering eighty percent of that, think about that. Yeah, your copay is going to be a few thousand. Yeah, yeah, right. So I, I just feel sorry for people who don't have the resources. Well, they don't, and they deserve to live as much as yeah. anybody else does, mm -hmm. and yet they can't get the therapy. And, and Obamacare and Hillary Care are not going to pay for the whole thing. They're Especially gonna, not. No. Yeah. In fact, they're probably thinking of cost all the time, right? I mean, if you are over a certain age, and this is when we get cancer, it seems like, is when we're 65, well, they've already 70. decided if you have uh, lung cancer over the age of 70, you don't really need chemo. Right, you're or done for. If you have a uh, 
a broken hip or a yeah. bad hip, yeah, over seventy five, a wheelchair or a little scooter will do fine for you, John. Yeah, right. And they just try to yeah. maintain you until you're. You're going to see Walmart full of scooters. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. So anyway, you would help people with those kinds of concerns. Yes. As far as getting them funding and yes. working out payments or whatever, yes. whatever it needs. We work with all our patients. Yeah, yeah. Do you think there'll ever be a time where, in the future, where people will be able to access this kind of therapy and it'll be at a very low cost? Do you think it'll ever come down, you know, like with I big screen TVs? And yeah, it's just like <laughs> everything else that is widely used, the cost will come down. Yeah, because more and more yeah. people will be. The thing we should do is to put his website on, the, on our Oh, yeah, well, the so website we will be up on the screen uh, for you. So for people do you meet people contact. personally, uh, doctor? Do you see them personally? See every one of my patients. Every one of your patients, Jim. Yes. And how many how many people are actually accessing the therapy now? We have five to seven new patients a week. I do. Now, have you thought about expanding your horizons here, maybe putting clinics in other parts of yes. the country? We and started one in Las Vegas already. Oh, you did? Yes. Okay, very good. So that's that's the beginning. The beginning. Yeah. <laughs> What's your ultimate goal, to have one in every state? or? Well, I, I'm not a young man. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, ultimately, I think it will spread, John, because yeah. it's a winning formula. For yeah. Now, doctors. do you have associates working with you, protégés? Yes, two doctors. Two doctors that are young, younger? Then you, yeah, little yeah. And then, do you go out like if you open a clinic in Las Vegas? Uh, those see. people use that same protocol. You monitor; they have to do it the right way. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, Skype and uh, and teleconferences uh, too. Okay. Okay. Now, do you have any children? We never asked that question. I have five. Uh, you have five? Five yeah. children and ten grandchildren. Whoa, well, my goodness. Now, are they doctors as well? No. They're not. <laughs> they had they're enough of that. <laughs> they saw too much of me working hard. Yeah, I imagine a doctor's <laughs> life, five kids, uh, you did, You probably didn't get a lot of time at home. You were probably on call. <laughs> I'm and, lucky to be married. My wife is very understanding. Yeah, and she helps you in, with the clinic work, She's right? a nurse practitioner. Yes. Oh, there you go. Oh, right. Great. Yeah. And uh, you hire a bunch of folks over there. I know you have a pretty good staff. We have about 15 people. Working around. with you for yes. many years. I imagine they just get a lot of thrill out of helping you people. You get a lot of positive feedback from patients who do well and go yeah. to good remissions. Yeah. I bet you got a lot of great testimonials, huh? We do. <laughs> That's super. All right. Well, you know, we want to thank you, doctor, yeah, for coming back to us because it seems show. like you were, it seems like every time uh, we talk about cancer, uh, personally or when we have the doc on there's so many great advances happening and and hopefully you're not the only one out there that is working on the same trend the no, same no. path in fact the meeting we just went to yeah John, this year show the cover yeah. the ioicp is the international organization of integrative cancer physicians yeah. and it, there was 250 doctors there from all around the and Isn't some something? from out of the country oh there we go well listen we want to thank you doctor for visiting thank us again back. keep yeah. us up to up to date on what's happening with thank your you therapy and how it's thank working we'd love to hear it you right thanks so yep. much you're you're for, thank for being with us up you see, see where and the audience I'm, I'm sure found this very interesting and so we want to thank you for being with us and invite you back next week for another episode of old tales in nevada past and present